what I want to do is share that, share that self-love that I have for this being while knowing that we all have a higher being that is all the same. It's coming up on my two year anniversary, well like full, full two years, where I've been on YouTube and it has just been really fun, just like documenting my journey and seeing the evolution, y'all, and I am evolving. If you are new here, then first of all, welcome. Okay, welcome, boo. I always love to welcome the new folks out here. Your girl is in Seattle, Washington, and I love painting large scale acrylic paintings of cosmic, colorful queens, inspired by all the things, okay? I always say like astrology, hip hop music, um, and I actually recently just did a video about that, talking about wrapping up the Zodiac series and it's done. I actually shared a video um, with my patrons about this. I was asked by my lovely patron April, what's next? What is the next series that I'm going to be working on? And I decided let's share with the co-creators and the co-creators are my patrons who are contributing to this extraordinary life and I'm so grateful for you all. So this is really kind of like expanding upon that but also giving y'all more insight about like what's to come. Okay one thing that I'm doing I'm shedding the narrative of being lost like I'm not lost okay as I said before I'm gaining clarity day by day and it's getting crystal clear y'all and like I just feel so radiant in the understanding and knowing that there is no right way, there is no blueprint, there is no formula, so it's like whatever. You don't have to be running in these circles just trying, trying to find answers. You gonna find answers in the doing. And so in the doing of this process, I've been learning and I really, and one, I'm rediscovering that yes, I always need to find time to paint. So I did do a self-appointed residency. Okay, I talked about that in a blog cast episode where I was dedicating the time for myself, giving myself the permission slip that I need to create. I'm not waiting on nobody, not waiting to get accepted into a residency. Your girl was doing it, okay? I'ma be real. <laughs> I'ma be 100%. I didn't really create much at all during that residency, but something more important happened during that time. And that was me getting my space together. And like what I noticed about myself is like the journey starts in the mind. It truly does. And there's so many videos about like mindset and, um, you know, just pretty much getting your mind right, okay? It's so true though, and so in this in this process, y'all, I begin in my mind right. So let's break it down. I really don't think that I'm gonna do a bloom series. As I'm entering into this bloom season, that's what I'm calling this time of me fully embracing every aspect of myself. And that, that even includes me painting more self-portraits of myself. So y'all might see in this picture, I think it's, <laughs> I'm looking in the viewfinder, I think it's perfect that like my ass is just like right here in the shot. <laughs> I want to create these large paintings and I've been using myself as a reference y'all okay I think this this might be only available for the patrons I don't know or maybe did like the first sneak peek because she's gonna have a little ass out okay she's gonna have a little ass out and so in a lot of not a lot but in these newer series of paintings that I've been working on I've been using myself as a reference and so the way that I did this was instead of taking photos of myself I did video and I was moving really slowly so that I could just do a screen capture of that video and I could use that photo so that's what I plan on doing for this blossom series like where it's just like a full like like a woman coming to her own you know like y'all this was a year that I turned 33 so it's like I feel like I'm coming into the woman that I want to be and the woman that is taking me a decade to get to where I am and actually I had saw this comment from uh one of the one of the two team members of subscribers Tippy so actually Tippy if you're watching this thank you so much for your comments on all the on all the videos but um they mentioned that uh, Tippy didn't realize how close we were in age because it seemed like I was further along on my journey and I could I could see how that could be y'all I'm 33 I started I started my website when I was 23 okay so this was like this was literally a decade ago so um, I started this piece months ago and I talked about it in the art and spirituality video and y'all I'm really just ready to bloom and I'm really ready to take the layers off and really that's what this piece is about I talked about this where I really wanted to do a painting where it's celebrating the black sheep but also reclaiming that narrative of black sheep because it sometimes it can have this like negative connotation but I I truly take pride in the fact of knowing that like I'm different <laughs> you know like 
I, I do not feel like Earth is my home, okay? I, I truly don't. I love Mother Earth. I love this planet. I think it's phenomenal, but I also feel like I move differently, okay? And for a while, for the longest time, I felt like I had to protect myself by wearing the mask, wearing this facade, wearing this identity where people felt comfortable. I'm a recovering people pleaser. Okay, I think a, I think a lot of folks can relate to that, especially women. We're almost like, we're almost trained to put other people first. So I've been in the journey of shedding that. So part of the aspects of this painting, the sheep, they shed in y'all. Some, some of their wool is literally coming off of them. And in the process of that shedding, they're transforming and going through this metamorphosis of becoming the person that they are. And truly, like when it comes down to this visual representation of what I'm trying to do, they're literally metamorphosing into a human being, you know? Um, and so, I love using purple a lot in my work and to me purple represents royalty, divinity, femininity, but not from a place of gender. You know, I think when we think of femininity, we can only think of women, but um, as human beings, no matter what gender you identify with, both of us have the masculine and feminine aspects of ourselves. And like, interesting enough, like Andy's favorite color is purple. Well, actually, his favorite color fluctuates between like blue and brown, but um, he actually really likes purple. And purple isn't only for like women, you know what I mean? I feel like purple has such a richness, it has such this confidence, such this power about it. But I also feel like purple balances the two. So like whenever I think about, of course, as an artist, I think in color. And so you have to mix red and blue to make purple. And so I'm, y'all know Gemini over here, okay? I'm a Gemini and I'm always trying to find this balance. You know, I'm always trying to like figure out where we can meet in the middle. And so I feel like with this fusion of red and blue coming together, make purple, to me purple, is like the balance and interesting enough i created um of the zodiac series libra she's purple and of course libra libra is all about balancing the scales you know so that's another reason why i use purple um one of my tattoos <laughs> We're sharing all the details today. Actually, Pamela had asked as one of, one of the co-creators, so shout out to you, Pamela. I'm gonna I'm do a whole separate video just for the patrons talking about all my tattoos because your girl got a lot, okay? But one of my tattoos says, I want to be green, but not so green that I can't also be purple. And so purple also, to me, represents wisdom and maturity, where green is that aspect of youth, naivete, um, beginnings, uh, childlike, you know, so it's like I, I want to have this wisdom and maturity of purple, but I also want to have this playfulness, this this joy, this curiosity, and this childlike mindset for life. You know, so that's why I have that. It's always about finding this duality, and it's always about finding new aspects of myself and new aspects of just sharing my creativity. And that's really what this journey is gonna be about, y'all. So we blooming, okay? We blooming, and I invite y'all to bloom with me. Like, I really don't know what this next journey looks like, but I'm. What I do know is that I want to live it out loud. Oh, I was supposed to be telling y'all about the series that I'm so <laughs> Bloom, okay bloom y'all since living in the house moving in and having the roses and all the flowers and all just the plants that's around me it's been so inspiring to just see mother nature at work you know and it's just so beautiful and there's so many aspects of myself that I want to fully bloom into and I've had a lot of fear around it a lot of insecurity around it and it's like what if you don't look at the flower next to you what if you just give yourself full permission to completely bloom. And I remember I shared a Patreon video. This was maybe like a year ago at this point. Y'all, I was tearing up in the video, the whole thing, and I was like, give yourself permission to bloom. Like, I just wanna bloom. And here I am blooming. And I remember Nalisha wrote, or we were just talking about this too, she wrote a comment. She was like, yes, baby, bloom, bloom, girl, bloom, you know? So I'm like, okay, this is the time to bloom. I'm not, we we shed in this indecisive mindset we're shedding this indecision this 
this confusion, this switching up, going back and forth. It's like we are moving forward with clarity and certainty. And even if later down the line, I end up changing my mind, I'm still moving forward. Like we don't have to go back, you know? It's like you you lose momentum in this indecision. And that's one of my biggest things whenever I'm trying to expand or grow or become a better version of myself I always turn back and it's like if you trying to get to New York you can have the road map but if you go in that direction and then be like no this ain't it and you turn back around and you like okay no that was that was that was the right direction <laughs> then you keep going but then you go no this ain't it this ain't let me go back because there was there was a different route there was a better route let me try this other route you end up staying in the same spot like you you end up just not going anywhere and so i'm so happy to release that y'all i'm so happy to release that so what i plan on incorporating in this new series is just a lot of nature a lot of mother earth a lot of flowers a lot of trees roses sunflowers you know we gonna we gonna fully dive into the clothes and the fashion and the loungewear and the scarves giving you all something where you can connect and you can enjoy the artwork as well y'all because to tell y'all the truth ooh, we being real real today okay let's go i want to share all those different aspects of what i'm creating whether that's on the canvas or in the backyard or on a mural wall or on the satin robes of these new products that we gonna be bringing to the world. You know, like I wanna, I wanna constantly have the space to evolve. So that's what I plan on doing. In finding that balance, it's also about trying to figure out how much do I share, how much do I don't. You know what I mean? Like they're so okay. So me and Andy be going down these rabbit holes on, on the internet, right? And some of the things that he always share with me is there's different people who break down the different aspects of hip hop lyrics. It's like, I never knew that Kendrick meant that. Like it's this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to link something below so that y'all can see what I'm talking about. It's just crazy when you peel back the layers of different creative processes. And so it's like, I don't wanna be spoon feeding y'all all the tea. You know what I mean? I think, it's, I think it's so nice to be able to slowly discover messages on your own. So in the process of me sharing my work, I'm gonna be sharing, but also some of it, like I want you to peel peel back those pieces too, you know? I am gonna, gonna give y'all a hint for this piece. This piece, one is ginormous, okay? It's looking like a damn backdrop for me, okay? I gotta be honest with myself that I really don't enjoy painting small. I feel that it feels restrictive for me. And like, maybe if I just keep trying and like, work at it I could feel a lot more comfortable with it but just painting large I feel like oh it just oh uh, it just does something to me <laughs> like uh, it just commands a room it just the energy the scale the the scope the subject matter it just really is able to it's just a presence about it y'all and the process of creating it feels like a full body immersive experience and I want to continue to create big and paint large and so with that they might not you know these paintings might not be available for the average person they might not be something that you can have in your home and you know, I'm grateful to work with a lot of different corporate organizations and property developers and universities where, you know, these originals could hang in these large spaces, which makes me excited to think about that. Like, oh, oh, I, I just I just see them also being in more like I see my paintings being in communal spaces, like where more than just want like we're more than just one household can experience it like I definitely want private collectors and somebody to be able to enjoy it in their own home but I also do see it being in like whether that's a community center or a museum or a gallery or a, a commercial space you know that's where I see some of these originals being hung and but I still want to make things available for y'all and that's that's where the prints will come in and in creating these smaller pieces for the sacred circle celebration it just it was actually a challenge y'all it's crazy it's it's kind of been a challenge creating these pieces but one this piece is huge it's gonna take me a long time to create it so in knowing that I feel like I'm gonna be pulling different aspects from this painting and elaborating on full conversations that I want to have that like really inspire me and so some of the aspects that I want to incorporate in future works 
um, is really stuff that I've been reading about sacred tarot, mysticism, mythology, the law of one, Dolores Cannon. Y'all, my reading, the books I read are just like out of this world, okay? <laughs> out of this world and I just geek out on the esoteric ethereal stuff and I feel like I'm finding my tribe over here with YouTube and I feel like I can peel back those layers with y'all and so that's what I'm really excited to do. Um, I'm going to be sharing more of that in like different visual diaries that I was doing. I shared one where I finished up reading all five of the Law of One books and that has really been a journey. It's really inspired me to learn even more about tarot and so I, I talked about doing a tarot series. Now y'all if you are new here then you might not know that Zodiac series took me like four years okay that was a long journey and so it is 12 astrological signs. In tarot the major arcana is 20 two of them bitches okay <laughs> 22 of them hoes okay so it might take me a solid like 10 years to finish a full tarot series and like i'm here for it too because i feel like i could really go deep on each arcana and each archetype and what message is trying to be shared and y'all i'm also reading this other book okay <laughs> can we can we share some of our book selections below like tell me what y'all read okay so what i'm reading is um Damn, your girl forgot the title. Pretty much, I'm, I'm gonna link it here, okay? Um, it's talking about the history of tarot. Now y'all, it's complex, it's complex. There, there's a lot of folks who think that tarot just started out as card games in Europe. That's a no for me, okay? That's not what my senses tell me and that's not what my reading has been telling me. And so this book is really interesting because they talk about that story, how people think that the origins of tarot was like in Europe in like 1400s, just like a little card game but also talks about the origins of it in Egypt. And you know, <laughs> they love taking stuff and claiming it as they own, okay? But that's a whole nother story. But it's really been interesting learning about the different origins of tarot through this book, talking about the history of tarot. But the Law of One talks about, they talk about how it wasn't even originally given to the Egyptians for divination. Like we just we just started doing that. We, we just started using tarot doing like tarot readings to try to figure out what different things mean and stuff, which I think is still great. Like there, there's still space for that, but I would really love to explore tarot from the lens of what is this one card or one image trying to say, you know? And so the law of one, and I think book number four, they like break down all that. So I'm really excited to, to peel back those layers. Y'all, I'm excited to peel back even more layers about divine femininity and like menstruation too. And like our, just the sacredness of our human vessels. And I feel so blessed to reincarnate on this planet in the body of a black woman while still knowing that I'm source and this is all still the shell that's housing my my light energy you know <laughs> so it's like in knowing that this is my shell it's like ooh, let's play with it you know I feel honored I feel I feel blessed to have this exterior you know and seeing all all the different things that it gives me access to which I think is one of the most frustrating things how our society can make women feel so unworthy and so less than especially the black woman especially the the brown skin black woman especially the natural hair black woman like honey there there's there's layers to this but i also feel so privileged in in my being even though society tries to give us the opposite narrative and part of what i want to do is share that share that self-love that I, that i have for this being while knowing that we all have a higher being that is all the same you know what I mean yeah I think I feel like the people who resonate with that get that you know <laughs> and if you don't that's all right I hope that you stick around long enough where maybe we can start pulling back those layers and truly I do think that a image a picture is worth a thousand words and so I'm really excited to see how I can personify those ideas and ideologies through painting and so I'm just excited, y'all. I'm excited for y'all to take the journey with me. But I just wanted to come through and share this insight with y'all. And I just want to thank you so much for being here and being on this journey with me. And I hope it inspires you to bloom in your life. And I hope it inspires you to step out on faith, move forward with courage, and truly understand that you can do and be and have anything you desire. Like if you truly believed that, what would you do? 
Like, how would your day change right now? Let me know. I hope you keep blooming. Baby, don't check for me. Taking special shout out to my patrons, especially my supernova patrons who are making this practice possible. Thank you all so much, and I will see you all next week. Be